I've been 3D printing nonstop for about four years now, pretty much exclusively with my Creality CR10. It's been a trusty workhorse printer, aside from a few cheap, easily replaceable components that would fail semi-regularly. I started running into intermittent clogging issues that I wasn't able to solve, although I'm pretty sure I know now what the problem is, but I figured that was a good enough excuse to go ahead and buy a new printer with a more modern feature set. Enter the Ender 6. mechanism for removing parts is quick, easy, and kind of fun. <laughs> You'll notice that my PEI sheet does not fill the entire bed area. That's because I purchased a 250 by 250 millimeter bed, which is the advertised build volume for this printer. However, you can clearly see that a bigger bed is needed. It's not really a problem for now. I'll just lose a little bit of build volume, so if I ever need to print something bigger, I can just purchase a larger bed. The top hat is essential for printing ABS, as that material requires an enclosure. The included enclosure design of the Ender 6 was a nice selling point for me, but it's basically useless since the build platform is always right on top to start, so basically not enclosed. It wasn't a big deal to make my own top hat, especially thanks to this design from Thingiverse, but if you're gonna have an enclosure, I mean have a complete enclosure, a top hat should be included stock. I've always assumed, partially through my own experience with the CR10, that a Bowden style tube extruder will always be inferior to a direct drive style extruder, so I planned that upgrade from the beginning. Thanks to the article from 3D Print Beginner, there's a handy guide for installing the BQH2 direct drive extruder. The BQH2 is an attractive option for this printer as it's probably the smallest and lightest direct drive extruder on the market. And those are good attributes for high speed printing. The installation was a bit tricky. There was a bit of adjustments to my workflow as I'm not used to this type of extruder. And I'm not sure if I'm really seeing an actual improvement in print quality, but overall I'm happy with the setup and I think it'll work well for me going forward. The cable chain is kind of necessary when a top hat is installed. 
it also makes for a neater way to manage all your hot end cables and quite frankly just looks more pro. I purchased this chain from Amazon and used some designs from Thingiverse for the adapter brackets. They were not a very good fit so I had to use some CA glue but it's functional. I relocated my filament spool to inside the enclosure. All you have to do is flip around the spool rail. It turns out there's just enough room to clear the bed on the inside. This allows for a more direct path for the filament to get up to the extruder instead of having to awkwardly route through my top hat. I have my old Logitech USB webcam running for remote monitoring and time lapses. It's not the best camera, but it's what I had laying around and it works. The addition of this cheap USB light helps to see inside the printer and helps with the webcam shots. Eventually I'd like to line the inside of the top hat with LEDs to really make the uh, build plate stand out. And finally the Raspberry Pi. This is so I can run OctoPrint and the custom Clipper firmware. I really like the OctoPrint web interface for controlling my printers as it makes many advanced adjustments and features easy to use. Clipper is an open source custom third party firmware that provides many advanced features for optimizing 3D printers, especially Core XY style printers like the Ender 6. Thanks to a great article by 3D Print Beginner, the installation was manageable, difficult and time consuming, but I was able to get it running. This is also the software setup I'll be running on my next project, so hit subscribe because that'll be fun to watch. Getting the screen working was particularly tricky, but I stuck with it and I'm really glad I did because I like the additional functionality that the screen provides. So there you have it, my heavily modified Creality Ender 6. It's been a long journey and I still have a lot of tweaking and tuning that can be done, but so far I'm quite pleased and satisfied with my decision to make the jump up from the CR-10. What do you fellow makers think about the Ender 6 or modifying and upgrading, customizing 3D printers in general? Is it worth it or just a waste of time and buy a more expensive printer? Let me know down in the comments what you think. And don't forget to subscribe because I've got some other cool projects in the works that if you're watching this channel, you're gonna like.